This is probably the last time you're gonna see the Jeep this clean because as you can obviously tell, it is snowing pretty hard right now and we're about to go drive it, which means it's gonna get absolutely filthy. We're spending the next week with a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xe. That blue is really nice. It's a couple days after Christmas. The Jeep just got dropped off and we have a pretty major snowstorm coming in. As you can see, it's already accumulating quite quickly. And what better way to test out a Wrangler Rubicon with the hybrid powertrain than to drive it in some snow. We will be taking it to Michigan also. So we're gonna be doing a road trip with a hybrid Wrangler and seeing, that, seeing what that's like. It is a plug-in. It is a full plug-in hybrid. Cold start is not exciting at all because it starts in pure EV mode. So what are we showing right here? Charge, percentage power, how much electric range do we have? It's averaging 17 MPG, 65% charge. Up there in the top right hand corner, 277 miles of total range, 65% charge is 16 miles of pure electric. 261 is for gas. All right, let's see how this thing does. Short little drive. I put it into e-save mode to save the battery and it's showing me also estimated time to 100% on a level one or level two charger. That level one is, that's 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 a lot of hours, seven hours, but an hour and two minutes on level two, which is a lot more doable. So only one mile in pure electric and eight and a half miles on gas. This is still very strange to me, the pure silence of electric mode. Uh, yeah, the last Wrangler I drove was the 392, which is probably the complete opposite of uh, the 4xe. It's just, Strange and smooth and quiet. Well, this is the future, I guess, even with whoa, off road Jeeps. It is getting quite snowy and slippery out. I grabbed the window sticker and got a bit of sticker shock, not because this is a plug in hybrid Jeep, but because it is very, very expensive. This Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xE is almost $70,000 MSRP, almost 70 grand for a Wrangler. I guess in a world where we have a V8 Hemi powered Wrangler that's pretty much six figures, I shouldn't be that surprised, but that to me still was really surprising in terms of the price point. We'll take a look at the window sticker right now. So it's a 2021 Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 4xE. Talk about a long model name. Unlimited means it's four-door, Rubicon, the off-road version, or they're all off-road trail rated. The most off-road version, 4xE hybrid. 4xE, not 4XE, which is what I thought it was initially. 4xE, I learned that at the uh, last media event I was at with Jeep. Base price of 55,000, as option $69,545. So as a Rubicon, it's got a lot of stuff as standard, but some of the notable options. We have Hydro Blue Pearl Coat Exterior Paint, which is only $295, and I think it looks really nice, like really, really nice. The leather trim bucket seats are $1,700. We get this kind of tan brown, a contrast of the blue, it's leather front and rear seats. We have advanced safety groups, we have the trailer tow, we have the steel bumper group, front and rear steel bumpers, uh, front and rear steel bumpers cost $1,700. Windshield and Corning Gorilla Glass, that's that's pretty handy because I, uh, I think Jeep Wrangler windshields are pretty prone to chips and cracks, probably because it's they're very vertical, uh, but I have heard that before from fellow owners. Uh, we also have the most expensive option here, the Sky One Touch Power Top at just over $4,000. So that's a removable top up here, power retractable. I'm not gonna do that right now because it's pouring snow when I just get snowed on and hopefully it clears up some point during the week and we can test it out. But the uh, One Touch Removable Top, $4,000. Oh, and also the uh, Body Color Fender Flares at $6.95, which costs almost double it. There's more than double the actual paint cost for an as option price of $69,545. So more numbers on the window sticker. We've got the fuel economy. There's a lot of numbers here. MPG equivalent with the uh, hybrid setup, $49. Gas only is $20. Um, that's the thing with these type of things, uh, with the hybrid plugins. You get pretty good if you're doing short range, you can use the electric mode, but gas only. 20 MPG is, is decent. It's a four cylinder. I mean, the Wrangler is not the most fuel efficient vehicle out there. One, it has the aerodynamic properties of a brick. Two, this is as a Rubicon, we have the more off-road focused tires and things like that. It's just not the most efficient. Um, around town, it'd probably be pretty good, but when I'm doing this road trip, when we take a, a four or five hour drive and you're not plugging in constantly, the range isn't gonna um, be bolstered that much by plugging in with electric mode. So it's just gonna be a four cylinder gas turbo engine. Uh, so we'll see what that's like on a long road trip. Now, two other 
things to note, with the plug-in hybrid, you do get 470 pound-feet of torque. That's a lot. 470 pound-feet of torque, I believe, matches what the Hemi 392 Wrangler brings. But for towing, off-roading, things like that, that's really good. And that benefits from having uh, electric motors for low-end torque. And the other thing, yes, it's pretty expensive, but I also think that because it's the plug-in hybrid, this does qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit, which can definitely help offset the cost uh, quite a bit for the Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited 3 4xe. There's a lot of letters and numbers for this name. Uh, I've been driving this for a little bit, looking forward to seeing more of what it's like to live with a Wrangler 4xe and also taking it on a road trip. And then I think a couple weeks later, we have a 392 coming. So I'll get to go from the hybrid one to the loud, fun V8, which we did off-road a little bit, but haven't spent a week living with it. And that I'm excited for. There are a couple of nice touches inside here. This whole dashboard is trimmed with stitched leather, like all the way across. That's pretty nice. The tachometer and digital screen in the middle and the speedometer are very uh, different. Actually, wait, there's no regular speedometer, is there? We've got percentage power being used in charge, a fuel level gauge. So you have to use the digital center screen for that. Interesting. Um, to comment on the left, obviously, when it's running an engine on mode, which it's not right now. I'm just sitting here with accessory on with the battery, so that's that's nifty. We got a leather trim steering wheel here, and then again, because the doors come off, window switches in the middle. If you've been in a Wrangler, modern any Wrangler really, you, you'll know that. And then as a Rubicon, we have the aux switches, sway bar, disconnectable, um, and then we can go. I'm just in two wheel drive right now, but uh, we can change that up too. For all of my extreme parking lot mall crawling, I can check out my forward camera and also the rear view camera. Very, very useful. Absolutely. I believe it has a spray nozzle up front too because it got really muddy when we were in off-roading uh, 392. And yeah, clean camera and real glass. So it sprays it off so you can still have a clean uh, view out on oh, the back. Windshield wipers going crazy. I could climb that curb with this thing. I totally could. We have the, let's see, where are the off-road pages? This is really cool, it provides a lot of data. It does take a bit to load. I've noticed it um, not only on the Jeeps with the off-road pages, but I think like an SRT project products, it takes a little bit for uh, the stuff to load up. Here we go, we've got all sorts of things. Trail cam is what I already pulled up earlier. Oh, no, back, I don't want that again. Um, Drivetrain, so I'm currently transfer cases in too high. Steering angles, all these things. It's really cool. Pitch and roll. Yeah. It's been snowing pretty hard and the roads got pretty messy. So just threw the truck into four wheel drive auto and it handled every, I just get hit in the face of a snowflake. It handled everything fine. Also loaded up with a bunch of just stuff we bought. So testing out the practicality. I'll show you that right now. But so far uh, it is out of electricity now. It's showing under 1% and no miles of pure electric range. So it's driving with the engine on. It still went into like pure electric mode, just coming into the neighborhood at low speeds though. But so far, the, uh, the Rubicon 4xe Wrangler has been pretty awesome. It's phenomenal for this weather. It works great. It was clean and now it's covered in snow and ice and still looks cool though. I've spent time with a couple of different JL Generation Wranglers and the Gladiator and I have a little bit of trepidation with road tripping a Rubicon because the big off-road tires are not the best and it's like drafty and noisy. It's not going to be refined and luxurious like a, a Grand Wagoneer would be which is on the complete other end of the spectrum in the Jeep lineup. But we'll see what the 4xe does. I'm mostly interested in seeing fuel economy. I've been averaging about 20 because I haven't charged this at all so the electric range is pretty much nothing. It shows under 1% battery uh, so we're just running off the four cylinder engine right now so probably around 20 mpg we'll see what it does on the freeway too will i plug it in over the weekend possibly if i find a charger or i'll plug it into my parents house and it'll take like eight hours or something insane to charge to full on just a regular level one outlet we'll see how it goes all the cool little touches jl has all these little dimensions it's built in toledo ohio developed in auburn hills michigan that's where the main uh chrysler jeep FCA or Stellantis plant is. So this is really cool. Wheelbase, overall length, trail, trail rail ready. Trail rail ready. Try, try saying that like 12 times fast. When you turn on the Wrangler, you get a pretty cool startup animation. Get the Rubicon lettering, it'll show 4xE. See a little Jeep that was crawling away too. And I think it says something for like, since 1941 or something along the side. Right there, since 1941 on the left screen. It's pretty cool. 
Very long five and a half hour drive, finally complete. You'll see an average MPG of 18.7, which is mostly freeway with a mix of stop and go traffic. That's actually not that impressive. And as speeds got higher, it got worse and worse. When there was still traffic and it was like stop and go and pretty slow speeds, it was averaging mid 20s, low 20s actually, like 20 to 22. And as I started to get faster and traffic freed up, we're averaging 20 MPG, but as I was going faster and faster, it started to drop, so it's actually not that great. I have a feeling it's because if you're not running short distances and we weren't plugging in and charging, the weight of the motors and batteries are probably just more detrimental for overall fuel economy. So from that perspective, it's not that great. And I just, I don't love Rubicons on long road trips. They're just, they wander around, they're noisy. It's really drafty, especially with this top here. Um, not the most comfortable in the world, but we are here. I am exhausted. I am going to go inside and probably go to sleep very soon, but, uh, did a 322 mile drive in the regular Rubicon 4xE. What the f The roof comes off. We have a convertible Jeep. Isn't it nice? No. It's nice. It's freezing. One touch. One touch and the roof is off. Look at that. Little button right there. Warm. I feel the warmth already. You are such a drama queen, or drama empress, Oh, sorry. look at that. So nice and warm now. How do you feel about the lack of heated seats in this Jeep? <laughs> Why are you wearing sunglasses? It's not even sunny out. <laughs> I'm at my parents' house for the weekend, and it's supposed to snow, so we put the Jeep in the garage. So I figured, might as well plug it into just a regular wall outlet. It won't get anywhere close to a full range, because I think it takes like 17 hours to charge uh, from empty. Actually, I can see that in the vehicle. But the charging port is right here. There's a cable in the back. We'll go grab that. And I'll just find an outlet. There's one hiding over there. On an unrelated note, I kind of wish I had my parents' garage where I live because they don't care about cars at all. But it's a three car. And look how tall the ceiling is. You could totally just like relocate these garage doors and put lifts in. And I could have like six cars in the garage. Anyways, maybe I need to find a house like this. Plug them to the outlet. Make sure you don't use an extension cord for this. You want to go straight in. The cable is quite long, so we can stretch it across to the other side of the Jeep. Just a standard charger here. Took the cap off. And there we go. Plug in charger. We've got the status lights right there. So you see it's, it was, it's very empty. It's showing under 1% because I haven't plugged it in at all. So once it's fully charged, those would all illuminate. That is really convenient. The Nissan Leaf also had that. Green light there, I'm assuming makes good too. Let's hop in the Jeep just to check and see if it shows any sort of info. More flashing green lights, indicator here. Uh, red would be a fault. And then solid green looks like all the way full, so this is nowhere near the full. Okay, plugged in and charging. 1%, estimated time to 100%. <laughs> Look at the time climbing. Uh, <laughs> um, pick a time, 15 hours? Why is it changing so much? That's weird to me. Shouldn't that just settle? Um, it's like varying by like an hour. Anyways, 15-ish hours, so let's see what it does. Literally, as soon as I hit stop recording and turn the camera off, it like stabilized. 14 hours, 59 minutes to a full charge, uh, which actually it might do overnight, so this is feasible. If you own this, obviously you'd want to put like a level two charger uh, because you're going to want to charge it more often, but nobody in my family nor do I myself own a uh, plug-in hybrid, so it doesn't make any sense. The charging light is no longer on, so I think that means the Jeep may have fully charged on a level one charger, so we'll see how many miles of pure EV range that's going to give us. Put the little weather seal cover back on. That clicks in. It's like a nice little E logo on it, and it's like, it's metal. Do I have full electric range? Let's see. Twenty-one miles, one hundred percent charge. All right, so we can try out again. Pure EV range. It's now showing my electric range as 27 miles, when I swear I thought it was 21 miles a second ago. Regardless, just make sure the Jeep is all the way on. There we go, and uh, off we go with some battery power. What is the range thing doing? There we go, 307 miles of total range is not bad. And for short distances, if I can come back and plug it in, this will now become much more efficient than driving on the freeway. We found another 4xE in the same blue, but it's a Sahara, not the Rubicon, so, but the blue looks really nice. This is still 
it just feels strange driving around in a silent Jeep Wrangler. But if I floor it, the engine kicks in because I'm asking for more power. There we go. So we drove 18 miles to get here. 17.9 miles were pure electric, 0.1 miles were gas when I floored it. Uh, but it's showing two miles of range at 4% battery life. So that's actually not bad. So if I were to plug it in again, we could get home on almost pure electric, but because I don't have a place to plug it in because I'm just in downtown Birmingham, we will drive back on gas and then plug it in once we're home. So from this regard, the 4xe definitely is advantageous. It's Sunday afternoon, which means heading all the way back to Chicago now. I uh, just celebrated my dad's birthday. Fully charged, 26 miles of range, 100%, and it works on just a regular wall outlet in your garage, level one. It just will take a long time, and if you're parking it for overnight and most of the day, it will get it fully charged. But obviously, if you own one, definitely get a level two charger. It's showing 282 miles of total range with a split of 256 gas and 26 electric. You don't ever get actually fully up to that 26 miles unless you're hypermiling, and I don't really know how to do that, I think. But anyways, we're gonna hit the road, have another four and a half hour, five hour drive back to Chicago. Hopefully the roads aren't too bad, um, but return road trip in the Wrangler Rubicon 4xe. Let's put the top down, Alex. Oh my God, no. <laughs> it's still cold outside. Last full day with the 4xe and also the first day back at work after the holiday break. So I'm gonna plug it into a level two charger. It's completely empty, under 1% battery range again. The drive home last night was actually really easy, but this 4xe just doesn't get that great of fuel economy on the highway. Ended up averaging 18.3 mpg over a 350 mile drive. Um, the last 350 miles, I did drive it. Around town, short distances, if you're plugged in, absolutely high 20s. Combined, it is rated at 20 with the engine just running, but I just couldn't get to that. I really think the added weight of the batteries and things and the uh, the motor uh, reduce the efficiency because I just looked it up. The regular two liter, uh, the eco diesel, the regular V6 Pentastar will get better highway and combined fuel economy when you're doing long distances. So this really is just only ideal if you're looking for fuel efficiency, if you're doing the shorter trips and you can take advantage of the plug in charging. That is Probably my biggest takeaway from spending time with the 4xe and taking it on a four or five hour road trip to uh, Michigan to see family. Otherwise, it's been pretty good. What you expect out of a modern Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, the on-road behavior is the on-road behavior. That's what you get when you get a Wrangler Rubicon. Definitely has some cool touches. Definitely looks cool. Got a lot of compliments on the blue paint and overall, I mean, and I actually saw a lot of 4xe's in Michigan. Surprising amount. At least uh, six or seven of them on the road. And you just tell by the little light blue accents. That's the first thing that caught my eye. The blue tow hook accents. If it was a 4xe or not. With that, we're going to plug it in. Have a full day at work. Uh, and we'll just wrap this up at the end of tonight. It's way faster. Level two charger, two hours and 49 minutes to full 100% charge. This week started with a nice, clean, shiny blue Jeep Wrangler. And after 800 miles, a drive to Michigan and back, plenty of snow and salt, it's quite dirty now. But it was very interesting experiencing the Wrangler Rubicon 4xe. As a hybrid, if you're driving long distances, my final takeaway is it doesn't make much sense because the efficiency was pretty bad for me. Just about over 18 MPG. I wasn't able to get to that 20 MPG combined. Now, was I driving at 55 miles an hour and hypermiling? No, it was really cold outside. And again, it's shaped like a brick. Um, I personally think if you're driving longer distances, longer commutes or taking it on trips and not just short around town drives and off-roading, the eco diesel makes a lot more sense in terms of efficiency. That being said, if you're driving shorter distances, just commuting to and work, which is what I did today, I plugged it in on a level two charger. I could have done it with no gas at all, just pure electric or just a tiny little bit of gas. Then it becomes really worth it. If you can charge it often, that 21 miles of range is usable. Holy crap, it's cold. It's like four degrees outside Fahrenheit right now. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the final final thoughts. It's it is a Wrangler Rubicon, and you get everything you expect out of that. This one for some reason didn't have a heated steering wheel or heated seats for stickering almost 70 grand. That seemed weird to me. Um, but again, the whole thing is like a drafty box sometimes when it's this cold out. Um, the torque is very nice. 470 pound-feet of torque combined in pure electric mode. It is nice and smooth and it'll get up and go. Uh, otherwise, there, that's a, a week living with the Wrangler Rubicon 4xe Unlimited. What a long product name, model name. 
tomorrow we have this getting picked up and a Bronco two-door getting dropped out. So it's gonna be really cool comparing the Wrangler and the Bronco. So check out that video too, which we'll probably post shortly after this video post. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Thanks for watching.